Okay, so we've done mass conservation, so now let's look at momentum. Here we can write that the net force per unit span acting on the control volume is going to be negative the integral around the circumference of rho v dot n v dl plus the integral around control volume of p infinity minus p and dl. Now, normally this term would just be minus p. There would be no p infinity in it. But since p infinity is a constant, um, we can pull it out of the integral and we can get the integral of p infinity n hat dl but the normal everywhere has zero contribution in the L direction, which is in the tangential direction, so this is just zero. So this is okay to include without changing the value of the integral, and it'll prove helpful later on. So we're going to focus on the x-direction equation here since we're interested in developing an expression for drag. But the z-direction result would yield... This would show that L prime is rho infinity gamma, which is just the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem. So you'll recall that when we originally introduced the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem, we used a somewhat hand-waving argument to go from being able to say that for a rotating cylinder, we got this result to this generally applying to uh, any airfoil. But essentially this is the reason why is that in the far field the airfoil can just be seen to to be, a, uh, its influence is only its circulation. And so this is why we would expect to get this result um, which you could show by going through this rigorously here. Instead we're going to focus on the x-direction which will tell us something about the drag. So the net force dotted with the x-direction by definition, is the drag per unit span. And so this is negative the integral around the control volume of v dot n times v dot x, now that we're only looking at the x component, dl plus the integral around the control volume of p infinity minus p n dot x dl. We can evaluate this pressure integral in the far field using Bernoulli's equation because the reason we can apply Bernoulli's equation is that, as we've previously discussed, the pressure does not vary across the wake. So the potential flow sets the far field pressure. P infinity minus P in the far field of X and Z is just one half rho v far field squared minus v infinity squared. Again, this comes from Bernoulli. So we can write an explicit expression for the far field velocity minus v infinity squared, and this is going to be now, using our definition of the velocity field, this is v infinity cos theta plus lambda over 2 pi r, all squared, plus minus v theta sine alpha, or v infinity sine alpha, minus the circulation over 2 pi r, all squared, minus v infinity squared. And so if we work this out, this is v far field squared minus v infinity squared is equal to 2 v infinity lambda over 2 pi r cos theta plus 2 v infinity circulation over 2 pi r sine theta plus lambda squared plus Circulation squared 
over 2 pi r squared. Now the other dot products in these uh, ex in this expression uh, will be evaluated as follows. So first of all, x hat is just cos theta r hat minus sine theta theta hat theta hat and r hat. These are the direction vectors, and z hat is sine theta r hat plus cos theta theta hat, and you could actually obtain this using a transformation matrix if you wanted. So then n dot x will simply be cos theta, and n dot z is simply sine theta. So then vffw dot x will be the infinity cos theta plus lambda over 2 pi r cos theta minus negative v infinity sine theta minus gamma over 2 pi r times sine theta plus delta u Now, to evaluate the integrals, first we'll start with the velocity term integral. This is going to be given by negative rho times z integral around the circumference of v infinity cos theta plus lambda over 2 pi r plus delta u wake times v infinity plus lambda over 2 pi r cos theta plus gamma over 2 pi r sine theta plus delta u wake DL and in the lecture notes this has gone through step by step here I'll skip to the result which in evaluating this we use this following integral identities Greatly simplify evaluating this large integral. So that then this ends up being negative three halves pro the infinity lambda plus rho v infinity v dot prime wake plus p infinity and here What we see is that p infinity has been written as rho times the integral in the wake of v infinity plus delta u wake negative delta u wake dz, which is just rho u 
e infinity minus u dz. This is the definition of the momentum defect. Further, we showed earlier that this volume flow rate in the wake is just equal to the source strength. So that this integral is simply negative one half rho v infinity lambda plus the far field momentum defect. We can evaluate the second integral, the pressure integral, using the velocity of discretion that was obtained earlier. And that's going to be r zero two pi one half rho v far field squared minus v infinity squared. Um, Post theta d theta. Putting in our earlier expression, we get one half rho r integral from zero to two pi of two v infinity lambda over two pi r post theta plus two v infinity gamma over two pi r. sine theta plus lambda squared plus gamma squared over 2 pi r squared cos theta d theta. And well that looks complicated, using these integral simplifications, we can get that this is simply equal to rho v infinity lambda over 2. Now, we can see that this term will cancel with this term, and so since the drag per unit span then is negative 1 half rho v infinity lambda plus p infinity plus rho v infinity lambda over 2, we get the result that we were looking for, which is that the drag per unit span is exactly equal to the far downstream momentum defect. So now note that the momentum defect, P of S, or here P of X, because our V infinity was in the X direction, that, that momentum defect in the wake is not constant, but it quickly asymptotes to the far downstream value of p infinity, because in the wake, um, the von Karman integral momentum equation is just d p of s p s equals delta star d p d s, where this is the pressure, this is the momentum defect. Um, but as we already said, the, the pressure is going to be constant in the wake um, from very close to the airfoil across it, and also in the streamwise direction, the pressure will tend towards the free stream pressure um, quickly uh, in less than one chord of the trailing edge. So then that means that dpds is zero once p is p infinity, and then p must be p infinity, no matter how delta star is changing. So it doesn't matter how much the wake is spreading out um, and delta star is getting larger. Um, once dpds is zero because the pressure is no longer changing, there's no more mechanism to change the momentum defect, and it's reached the far field value, giving the drag for the airfoil.